Online family, my name is Mariah and I'm the children's pastor here at A Church Called Home. Thank you for joining us today. We truly believe God is going to speak to your heart wherever you're watching from. We love hearing from you. We try to make it super easy for you to connect with us. If you text the words, Welcome Home to 94000, you can share a testimony, send in a prayer request, see our upcoming events, you name it. It's available by texting Welcome Home to 94000. If you are watching and you are in our area, we realize that before you visit in person, first you will visit online. We love our online services, but trust me, it's even better in person. Now let's join Pastor Jason as he shares the Word of God with us today. Hey, what's up online family? Thank you for joining me today. In the month of January, we are in a series called Made for More. Just the other day, I was thinking about how there's always something or someone promising us more. I mean, think about it. You're in the cereal section at the grocery store and there's that box that says 30% more cereal if you buy this box or 20% more shampoo if you buy this bottle. 50% more channels if you subscribe today. There's always something or someone promising more. 40% more of this, 30% more of that, more, more, more. All these ads appeal to a desire that we all have for more. There is a longing deep inside every person, whether you know Jesus or not, for more. Just the other day I was talking to a friend of mine, someone I've known for about a decade, and my friend, he doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, he's successful on the outside. It looks like he has everything together. And I have been acquainted with this guy for, like I said, about a decade. And the other day he called me and he said, um, I have everything I could want on the outside. But he said, I know, I know there has to be more. <laughs> you know, more stuff can't satisfy that desire for more. But more of God, more of His presence, more of His touch on your life, more, more of His hand on everything that you're doing, more, more of His Word, that satisfies our desire for more. We kick off every year with 21 days of prayer and fasting because nothing screams more of God than a season of prayer and fasting. John the Baptist, he said to his disciples, I have to decrease and Christ needs to increase. That's what we do when we pray and we fast. We say, God, less of me and more of you, Jesus. We say less of what I want for my life, less of my agenda, and more of what you want for my life, more of your agenda. I want to encourage you in this season of prayer and fasting to start thinking about prayer as an opportunity, not a duty. Years ago, someone asked me, Jason, do you pray because you feel like you have to or because you love to? Do you read the Bible because you have a sense of duty, you have to do it, or is it because you love to do it? Do you go to church because you feel like you have to or because you love to? Our relationship with God is just that. It's a relationship. So as we all go into this season of prayer and fasting, I want you to start thinking about prayer, not as a duty, but as an opportunity. Because the truth is, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, in this world that brings a greater return than that of prayer. I want to share a story with you about a company that missed an opportunity. Maybe you're old enough to remember a company by the name of Blockbuster. In the late 1980s and throughout the 1990s, Blockbuster dominated the movie rental business. At their peak, they managed just over 9,000 stores nationwide. Are you old enough like myself to remember going to Blockbuster? Me, my kids, we talk about this when they were little. I would take them to a local blockbuster and we'd walk down the aisles and I'd let them pick out a couple movies that we would watch over the weekend. Maybe you have enough years on you, you can remember going and picking out a blockbuster movie. Well, check this out. In 1997, there was a small startup company that came on the scene. The company went by the name of Netflix. The young company was struggling to gain traction. So the CEO of that company, Netflix, went to the CEO of Blockbuster 
and offered to sell that company for $50 million, $50 million to Blockbuster. Blockbuster said no. Blockbuster missed an opportunity of a lifetime. Today, Netflix is it has 247 million subscribers and it's only one of 59 companies in the S&P 500 with a net worth of over 100 billion dollars. Where's Blockbuster at today? Well, Blockbuster went belly up. To my knowledge, there's only one Blockbuster in the nation and it's more of a museum than it is a business. Blockbuster missed an opportunity of a lifetime. My friend, prayer is an opportunity of a lifetime. And for us to miss that opportunity, mm, a friend of mine told me years ago, every opportunity of a lifetime has to be seized within the lifetime of that opportunity. Prayer is an opportunity of a lifetime. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, with God, all things are possible. Come on, do you believe that? I know you do or you wouldn't be watching. Jeremiah the prophet said, is anything too hard for God? And we know the answer to that, it's no. When Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, the word impossible was deleted from the dictionary. All things are possible to those who believe, the Bible says. Why else would Jesus teach His disciples to pray? I mean, think about this. He didn't teach them how to preach. And preaching's important. He sent them out to preach, right? They preached the gospel. They preached the good news of the kingdom. But not one time do we have any reference in Scripture to Jesus teaching His disciples how to preach. He did teach them how to pray. And when He taught them to pray, was He teaching them to practice religious rhetoric? No. He was encouraging them to pray because He knew the power of prayer. He knew that prayer was an opportunity Think about some of the things Jesus said. Matthew 21, 22. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, Ask what you will, and it will be given you. I love what Jesus said in John 16, 24. He said, Until now you've asked for nothing in my name. But ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. You know, the Bible says that God delights in the prayer of His saints. Now, now why does He delight in the prayer of His saints? It's because God knows when we pray things happen. Let me share a personal story with you on the power of prayer. When our daughter Tori was about three years old and her brother Chaz was about a year old, we got our first family pet. It was a black lab named Puddin, a little pup. And uh, it was solid black, but it had this unique striping underneath its chin and, and down its chest. And Puddin uh, was into everything. Ate, uh, ate all of our shoes, right? Ate, ate the wicker outdoor furniture. Uh, Puddin was full of life and the typical puppy chewing up everything in our house. One night, um, someone came down Main Street. We lived on Main Street in a small town in Alabama. And one night, somebody came down Main Street and stole all the dogs in the neighborhood. The rumor was they were going to a, a, a town about a, an hour away and selling them at a flea market. We don't know, but all we know, Puddin was gone. About two weeks later, uh, we got a cat. And uh, my son, our son Chaz, he, he loves cats still today. We got this little cat, and uh, I don't even remember what the name of the cat was. The cat lasted about a week. We were outside playing with the kids, and the cat caught something in, in its eye, and boom, it was across the road. It was going for it, and a car passing by ran over the back half of that cat. Didn't kill it instantly. The cat was dragging the back half of its body and it scurried underneath the house across the street. Now think about this, they, the kids had just lost their, their dog and, and now right in front of everybody in the family, the cat's been ran over. I went around that house and crawled around the foundation and called for that cat and 
you know, after a while, I assume that cat just went under there to die. Now, my parents, being the wonderful people that they are, they decided to, uh, you know, redeem the time, and uh, they went and got a goldfish and gave it to the kids. Do you know what the life span of a goldfish is? I, I mean, I'm thinking, okay, so you lost a dog, now they've lost a cat, and that goldfish is going to last two or three days, and then it'll be belly up. And sure enough, in about a week, I got up one morning, and uh, the, the fish was belly up. It was dead. We had a nice little Christian burial behind the house for it. No, actually, we flushed that thing and said goodbye. True story. About a month goes by. The dog's gone. The cat's gone. The goldfish is dead. I'm pushing Tori in a stroller to a local park just up the road about a block. And Tori, this three-year-old little girl, she says, Daddy, if I pray, will Jesus bring me back my pets? Now, I mean, how do you respond to that, right? You can't just shatter a three-year-old's faith. You know, you're not going to say no. What I said was I said, uh, Baby, I bet if you pray, God will bring you some new pets. As I'm saying that, I'm calculating in my head how much this miracle is going to cost me. And then Tori said, Daddy, I don't want new pets. I want my pets. And so she prayed. And, she, and here's, here's I, I can remember the prayer. Here's what she prayed. She said, Oh, where, oh, where could all my pets be? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? That, that was her prayer. And then she said, Lord Jesus, will you bring me back my pets? I kid you not. And again, if you don't, you don't believe this, I don't guess I blame you. I don't know that I would. The following Saturday... I don't remember what day of the week it was that she prayed that prayer. The following Saturday morning, I woke up hearing a dog barking on her front porch. I got up thinking somebody had got a new dog and had got out. and It was barking and barking. Bar I got up out of the bed early that morning to run this dog off. I opened the door and it was Puddin'. Puddin'. The dog that had that unique striping under his chin and his chest, it was was pudding. My kids were going crazy when I woke them up. Later the same day, our neighbor come across the street as, as we were playing with pudding out in the front yard. She come across the street out of the house where that cat scurried underneath that porch. She came out of her house carrying a cat. She said, I came home one night. I heard this cat underneath my porch. She said, I, I took the cat to the vet, got it nursed back to good health. My parents said they thought it belonged to you and your kids. Man, Tori was ready to buy a white suit and a big tent and put Benny Hinn out of business. She was on fire. I told Melissa, if that goldfish shows up, I'm out of here. I flushed that goldfish. Listen, here, here's the point of the story. God moves when people pray. Think about prayer like currency. I mean, think with me for a minute. Every kingdom has a currency. And a kingdom's currency is the means by which the citizens of that kingdom obtain what they desire. Prayer is the currency of heaven. Because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, we can go boldly before the throne of grace in our time of need. And we can pray. We can ask in faith, believing, and because of what Christ did on the cross and the empty tomb, we have access to the Father in prayer. We don't have to send a priest in on our behalf. We don't have to send someone else in. We can come boldly into His presence and ask for whatever it is that we need. Every kingdom has a currency. I mean, think with me for a minute about many different kingdoms in our world. In, in Brazil, it's the Brazilian real. That is the currency of that kingdom. In Canada, it's the Canadian dollar. In Japan, it's the yen. In Mexico, it's the peso. In the United States, it's the American dollar. In Europe, it's the euro. Every kingdom has a currency, and that currency is the means by which the citizens obtain what they need or what they desire. Well, the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, that we are citizens of a kingdom, not just here on earth, but Spiritually speaking, when we gave our heart to Christ, we became citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And because of what Christ did for us, that finished work that He did on the cross when He said it's finished, the empty tomb when He rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave, 
because of Christ and what He's done for us, we as citizens of heaven can through prayer go in and access all the good things that God has for us. So in this season, I'm encouraging you to take the limits off, to pray big, to believe big, to ask big. I want to give you one more thought to think about. Blind Bartimaeus. Do you remember that story in Scripture, in the Gospels? Jesus is coming down the road and blind Bartimaeus positioned himself on the side of the road, got himself in the right place at the right time for a miracle. And as Jesus is passing by, blind Bartimaeus cries out to God. He prays. That's what prayer is. It's crying out to God. He cried out to God, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now think about how Jesus responded. Number one, he stopped. There were people trying to get blind Bartimaeus to shut up. There's always going to be something or someone trying to, trying to interfere with your uh, relationship with God, with your prayer time. Uh, trust me, uh, I, I like to pray early in the morning because if I, if I don't do it first thing in the morning, uh, there's always going to be something or someone coming uh, in, into the scene and, and messing all that up. So, so start your day off in prayer. Blind Bartimaeus, he cried out and, and people were trying to get him to hush. Jesus stopped. And then Jesus did this. He asked him, what can I do for you? What, what do you want me to do for you? Now, it's obvious, right? Blind Bartimaeus is called Blind Bartimaeus because he's blind. But in that story, we find that, that Jesus is encouraging him and encouraging me and you to put words to our desire, to verbalize what it is that we want from God. I like to say it like this, what's prayed in vagueness will stay in vagueness. So be specific in this season. What is it you're believing God for this year? What is it you're hoping for? Let me pray for you as we close. Father, I thank you for this new year. All the possibilities of 2024. We believe, God, that you have more in 2024. God, we open our heart up and I pray for my friends watching and I ask that you'd pull us all close to you. God, stir up in us a desire for more of you. God, thank you for satisfying that desire. You said, when we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled. So thank you for filling my friends today in Jesus' name. Hey, thank you for watching. If you're in our area, hey, come join us. I've got a new book in January I'm giving out called God Has More. I'm praying for you. Bless you. Have a great rest of your week, great rest of your day, and we'll see you next week. Hey, friend, thank you for joining us today. I hope the Word blessed you. I hope the service blessed you. I want to take a moment and I want to pray with you. And if you, by chance, don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, would you pray with me right now? I'm telling you, there is nothing better than knowing God personally. And because of Christ, you and I can have a personal, real, authentic relationship with Him. If you're away from God and, and today you say, you know what, I, I want that, I, I need that, I desire that. Will you pray with me? Just repeat this after me. Say, say Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for dying in my place for the wrong I did. Forgive me. Come into my life. Make me clean. I want to know you. Today I receive your mercy and I receive your grace. Today I make a new start in Jesus' name. Come on, say, say amen. You know, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 31 years ago, that's exactly what I did. March 15th, 1992, my life has never been the same. Hey, I'd, I'd love to send you a devotion. It's called Making a New Start. It's a devotion I did that we give out here at the church for people who make that decision to start a relationship with Christ. Why don't you text us Text the words, Welcome Home, to 94,000. 
Fill out a connection card and, and we'll send you a digital copy of that book. Hope you've had a great time joining us today. God bless you and look forward to seeing you next time. Welcome home.